Um, I am now passing it off to Federico and Irede. I'm, de I'm definitely getting these wrong each time, but <laughs> passing it off to you two to introduce to us the nature-based tourism and well-being book. So thank you for joining us and I will let you have the floor. Apologies, often I forget to turn the microphone on. Um, if you just give me a second, um, I will share the screen so we can um, then have a little bit of a presentation. Thank you, Emily, for giving us this uh, wonderful opportunity to have this space in this uh, beautiful conference and uh, welcome Welcome to everyone for the presentation of uh, our Tourism Naturally book. Uh, we, it's a really a pleasure uh, to have this opportunity. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we are um, doing a, a book with the Cabi editor about the topic of this to conference, nature-based tourism and well-being, looking at impacts and future outlook in this, um, this uh, wonderful topic. Uh, please, Iride, can you? Yes. Okay, the, uh, I am the editor-in-chief of this uh, um, a book. I am working with uh, Alessio, uh, the fourth image that you see on, on the right, for the University of Pisa. Then there is uh, there are Eride and uh, Eleni uh, from the UK University of Buxton, and then there is Jim uh, from the Colorado State University. So, so we have uh, we are in five, and we represent. Uh, uh, three university that uh, take part of, of uh, as a fundamental uh, partners in the consortium of this conference. Okay, please hear it. Next slide. Yes, uh, as we can see from this uh, mm, slide in the in. Uh, mm, on the left, uh, the link between our book and the conference is strong. The, the book has, uh, is in, in, the, in an evolution phase. We did a first book in 2018 uh, about tourism, health, well-being and protected areas. And this book uh, has been uh, also translated in Chinese language and has been edited in 2022. Uh, but what we want to uh, evidence uh, now that the book uh, born in 2016 as an idea uh, to give an opportunity to the conference presenters to publish their um, contribution in an homogeneous and uh, organic place uh, where we we try to give an evidence to some some of the best ideas that uh, uh, circulate around the conference. Uh, so also this new edition of, the, of uh, a book uh, have some places for people attending and participating to this conference. So here it is uh, your moment. Thank you, Federico. And um, welcome, everyone. Um, it is a little bit um, on the late side in Europe. I'm not sure if you're joining us um, all from the other side of the pond. Um, it is 7.30 and 8.30, so not too late. Um, and um, I hope you're going to take a little bit of time in um, considering, of course, the opportunities that we have here. As Federico said, um, this book um, really uh, builds in on, on the tradition um, of tourism naturally that has been established in, in of course, long time ago in 2016 in Sardinia. 
And at that time, um, the idea of the book was not just simply about giving an opportunity for people to, of course, um, put forward their research and contribution, but also to boldly claim that an investigation on tourism, health, well-being, and definitely a focus on protected areas did matter. It mattered in 2016, but it does matter even more so today. I'm sure you've all had an opportunity to listen to the beautiful presentations. I've been trying to catch up as best as I possibly can with the recording. And it has been absolutely amazing to see how um, matters, not just simply in relation to nature-based tourism, but also stakeholders that really deal with such an important asset, which is nature, um, are actually taking these discussions for real. Of course, our focus is fundamentally on, on tourism as a practice um, and an industry, um, but as a practice, which fundamentally is based on, on an encounter of people within spaces, with other people, for different reasons, um, matters and it has implications. Last yesterday, I just feels like last week, but it is yesterday, I was listening to one of the plenary speakers and they were talking about the importance of building community capacity and resilience um, and across the globe. And these discussions are ever so prominent today. Um, nature-based tourism sometimes it is used as a vehicle for empowering communities but nature-based tourism is embroiled in bigger discussions uh, which often you know link into potentially the agenda 2030 for sustainable development the SDG goals but they also link a national level a local level with policies politics ideologies and nature what we're talking about today as to whether uh, a country such as in the UK, for example, the Prime Minister should attend or should not attend the COP. Um, these discussions do matter. And today I was listening to the news and somebody was saying time is running out in terms of climate change and, and, and global warming and really we should step up. So all these discussions really started uh, becoming really prominent in our heads uh, when we came up with the title and the idea for this book. And the aim of this book is really fundamentally about providing perhaps even a stronger vehicle for giving a voice to a wide variety of academics, but also industry pra practitioners. Um, and this is where the inter interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary aspect of, of this book is absolutely essential. We aim to give voice or to enable uh, different stakeholders to be represented for their voices, their thoughts, to be heard. Of course, this is an academic book, but it's not just simply about academics or researchers that may be doing research in the field and, going, and then going away. This is a book also about practitioners, industry representatives, that want to put, or, or, or associations that want to put forward case studies in terms of good practice. We aim fundamentally to shake up the bit and that, of that discussion about what it means to do tourism and nature-based tourism in what it increasingly looks like uh, living with COVID, if you wish, world. COVID has not gone away, but definitely 2021, and again, I was listening to some of the presentations yesterday, um, has dramatically changed behavior, is still dramatically changing behavior. Definitely is what I see every single day in the UK. So this book aims to provide a, a robust scientific foundation for a wide variety of voices that are firmly interested in saying something that it matters about nature-based tourism. Of course, we focus on protected areas uh, for us, those are essentials, definitely in the old continent in Europe, protected areas are a, at a premium. In the UK, they're definitely at a premium. But we also want to focus and give a wider avenue for researchers that perhaps are investigating 
wider socio-ecological systems with an aim of encouraging future outlooks, imagining a future, and a future that perhaps is about resilience, perhaps is about innovation, perhaps is about finally tackling uh, issues in a different way. Uh, because the way that we have done it in the past, whether it is about conservation, management, stakeholders, approaches, perhaps they haven't worked, or perhaps these models have been implemented a little bit too softy softy, or just expected that one context will apply and one particular solution will apply to others. If anything else, what 2022 has shown is that we are in need of actually getting together and opening up discussions and really being very robust in our questioning of the way we see the world and perhaps sharing ideas and sharing dialogue and raising questions, it's the way forward. So this is what we aim in this book. And of course, in this book, we look at a multitude of, um, if you wish, uh, topic. We didn't want to be restricted in terms of um, the, sorry, I'm just trying to move it out so that I, it doesn't, um, you can see. We didn't want it to be restricted. What does it mean, nature-based tourism? Um, for each one of us, it may mean different things. Um, tourism is, of course, an industry. It's a system and it involves million stakeholders. And while some forms of nature-based tourism may be focusing on ecotourism, but some others may be focusing fundamentally on um, sustainability uh, within protected areas, um, areas of outstanding natural beauties. We wanted to give an opportunities for contributors to actually dig deeper in and raise issues. So for us, an opportunity to focus on those particular areas that perhaps do not necessarily uh, conceive a walking or a climbing or offering particular um, traditional form of, of nature-based tourism activities, uh, but still firmly embedded in, 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 in the use of natural natural resources. We wanted to give these people an opportunity. So that's why in the type of, of, of topics, we actually include gastronomic tourism, regenerative tourism, transformational tourism, well-being, wellness retreats, a lot of the time, forest bathing, these are new practical activities. Well, they're not really new, they are heritage-based activities, but they've come to the fore with an idea of reimagining a future and reimagining an encounter with nature and perhaps bringing benefits to the communities that somehow have the honor or the dishonor sometimes to deal with guests or tourists. We wanted to focus on a lot of activities, the educational tourism, heritage tourism, integrated forms. We wanted to give an opportunity for people to think widely and broadly and to come up with ideas of how to, of course, not necessarily make the world better, but make uh, this type of tourism a little bit more effective and efficient and, of course, resilient and beneficial for everybody not just for the companies and the, the promoter. We decided to focus on, 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 on demand to organize, um, of course, the calls and the participants' thoughts. Um, we asked for researchers' contributions in relation to tourist expectations, tourist research in relation to perceptions, motivations, preferences, emotions. But we also we wanted to focus on the supply side. And so for us, definitely for me, the issue of governance was very important. Protected areas, uh, areas of natural fragile environments altogether, really often are at the middle of, in the center of big discussions. And governance is still, funnily enough, an issue that needs to be discussed properly. As is strategic planning, as is capacity building in relation to nature-based tourism. What does it mean? How do you engage local communities that perhaps have this resource, but they don't know how to use it? Not that they don't know how to use it, of course. Of course they know it, they use it every day. But how do they use it in a particular tourism context? How do they find their voice to actually channel their views, their norms, their opinions, their ways of doing without following necessarily a marketing dictate? 
We focused on giving opportunities for studies to focus on stakeholders' engagement, destination management, resilience, and of course, entrepreneurship. This is also very important for us. We also gave an opportunity for contributors to think about uh, research or to think about uh, bringing in case studies or examples where innovation um, might actually um, enable to look at firms of nature-based tourism, both from a supply and, and demand side. So we gave a broad remit in terms of bigger trends. How can digitalization, for example, enable communities not just simply to take ownership or organizations, so destination management organizations, parks, organizations and management, um, how could they benefit it? I remember a discussion a few years back in relation to the chance, the difficulties of managing demand, especially during COVID, and to actually encourage pro-environmental behavior at the time where everybody was desperately trying to engage in nature for different reasons, mostly for running away from their bedrooms, I guess, uh, but for different reasons. Well, digitalization, uh, innovations in AI really are bringing in some important tools that are worth expanding and exploring. And perhaps we are in need of looking at other disciplines or looking at other research in other sector and create collaborations with an idea of reimagining again a better future for this type of tourism for the benefits of everybody. And of course, well being, whether it is in terms of ecological well being, whether it is in terms of psychological well being, whether it is in, term, in terms of social well being, um, workplace well being. These are important discussions. What is well being and why does it matter, not just simply for an ecosystem, uh, but what does it matter and how will it matter in the future? So, this was our remit, and this is what it, we intended to. Um, do when we start to circulate in the call uh, of this book. And of course, we worked with Cabi to make sure that this book built on the tradition of the previous books and was firmly embedded within the Tourism Naturally Conference, because first and foremost, this is the right venue where we all should be bringing together our ideas, our thoughts, and we should join through our network opportunities, join forces to say something that matters for all this uh, particular areas of interest. Federico, over to you. Okay. Uh, the structure of the book uh, is made of uh, four parts uh, and uh, an additional introduction, of course, a conclusion, but the parts that are interested to you as potential authors are the methodological part that will be shortened than uh, the other uh, three parts about um, which kind of methods and approach we can use to for um, well uh, study sustainable tourism uh, uh, dynamics. Then, as uh, Irida explained, we have uh, two parts about uh, demands and supply side with all the topic, the topics that Iride well explained before. And then case studies, because yes, theory, but also practice. And um, the internal structure of each chapter, country, uh, chapter will be different. Please, uh, Iride, the next slide. Thank you. Yes. Try it. Yeah. yeah, so methodological chapters must be the more robust. Uh, speak about methodology is not easy. And so we give a space from 8,000 words to 10,000. Then the conceptual chapters must be lean as conceptual chapter. So no more than 7,000 words. So be effective in uh, uh, tell your message, use uh, a strong bibliography uh, this representing the state of the art 
of the topic, but not too long. B bibliography, references, be, uh, be concise, and uh, so stay between 4,000 and 7,000 words. And even more concise must be the chase chapter, where the uh, theoretical part the, must be very, very lean and the methodological part lean, uh, but not, not too much. And then explain the case and especially the uh, managerial uh, implication and uh, what we, which is the message that can come out from the case. Please, next one. Okay, we have only one date in our schedule. It's the, the end of January. So by the end of January, potential uh, authors must submit the uh, book chapter, the final book chapter, um, and um, to uh, next slide, please, next and last slide, to or me or Alessio, so the two uh, authors from the University of Pisa, and uh, whoever is interested uh, can contact us and we will give uh, you all the information necessary to make the submission about uh, the format, uh, about, uh, yes, uh, the, um, the kind of uh, uh, more details uh, according to the kind of chapters uh, uh, that you are in, uh, oriented to, to submit. Okay, thank you uh, for your attention. And now it's the time for uh, any question or uh, uh, yes, curiosity about the book. Hey there, um, we do have a question in the chat box. Uh, Alexandra says, hi, I'm currently working on research for my bachelor thesis regarding the touristic activity of stand-up paddling and its eventual sustainable benefits, including well-being. Do you think the still growing trend of SUP can be promoted and utilized within the context of the book and its topics? Well, I'm sorry, you need to... You, you. Uh, if, yes, if you want. Um, thank you very much for your question. And um, Alexandra, it's an auto awesome topic, I want to say. Um, I'm thinking myself about, I've never done it, but I was thinking. Um, it definitely sounds like an interesting case study. Um, and, um, and as you said it yourself, it is um, an interesting um, activity uh, that it is growing. Um, you could look at it from different perspectives, but definitely is an activity that is very much picking up in Europe. And it, I come from the Mediterranean, from Sardinia originally, so I can see that going very strong, but it's also going strong in the UK. I see this um, as a case study, so I would focus fundamentally on uh, a particular location which most likely uh, you will be using probably as a subject of um, your research. Um, and yes, it's, it's definitely an interesting case study from more from the consumption side, of course, um, that needs a little bit more research, um, but, um, but yeah, I'm not sure whether I answered you correctly, but definitely it's, it's something that um, will make a really decent case study. Great, thank you. I don't see any other questions right now. Um, do we have any other questions from the audience? Yeah, I don't see anything. So we can go on a quick short minute break before our next session. I wanna say thank you so much to both of you for joining us and for presenting on this book. Thank, thank you. you or the opportunity. Thank you very much and all good luck to all of you. 